The Blue Beetle. Leaping down upon the underworld to smash Ganglin comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled Smashing the Restaurant Racket. There has sprung up in York City an organization called the Cosmopolitan Restaurant Owners Association. Its ostensible purpose is to protect restaurant owners and cafeteria owners from outlaw sit-down strikes. Its real purpose is to extract money from restaurant owners to line the pockets of a few politicians, racketeers, and dishonest union leaders. As our story opens... Patrolman Dan Garrett, who is really the famous Blue Beetle, is discussing the racket with his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz the chemist, in his laboratory back of the little apothecary shop. You know, Doc, no racket could ever become strongly organized if businessmen weren't so easily intimidated by thugs and strong-arm men. You're right, Danny. Uh, but then the Blue Beetle would be out of a job. Uh, there'll always be crime and criminals for the Blue Beetle to track down. Yes, unfortunately. Uh, where are you going now, Danny? Down to headquarters to meet Manigan. He and I are doing a little pavement pounding today. That doesn't mean a demotion, does it? No. Mike complained to the chief that he was getting fat from riding around in the patrol car so much. So the chief told Mike to try a little footwork for a while. I said I'd take a trick with him. Well, I'll bet you two will be into some new case before long. <laughs> no doubt. Well, so long, Doc. I'll see you later. Say, Stacy's cafeteria is still being picketed. Yes. Does he use non-union help? Not that I know of. His head counterman belongs to Local 65. He's a friend of mine. Uh, I'm going to question that picket. Hey, buddy. Doesn't Stacy hire union employees? Yeah, but Local 56 don't recognize their local. Well, what's the matter with their local? Nothing, I guess, but our president says we've got to get our men in Stacy's or else. Aren't both locals recognized by the AF of L or the CIO? I don't know. All I know is I get three bucks a day to walk up and down in front of Stacy's with the sign and say, don't patronize Stacy's cafeteria. Is Stacy a member of the Cosmopolitan Restaurant Owners Association? Huh? You heard me. Uh, listen, officer, I, I ain't supposed to know nothing about that. I, I got a family to support and I need my job. You're an accessory to a crime. You know that, don't you? Well, what do you mean? He means this Cosmopolitan Association is a crooked racket and you're aiding them. Listen, officer... There's a lot of us ain't in favor of some of the things that's done, but we ain't arguing with our bread and butter. All right, give it to him, boys. Hey, you guys, what do you think you're doing? Come on, copper, I'll let you have it. Says who? Come on, Mike, let's round them up. There goes another one. Yeah, and here's a sock in the nose for the leader. I got him. Ah, uh, yeah? Well, how do you like this? Oh. Drop that gun or I'll break your arm. Hold him, hold him, Danny. He almost got me. I'll take care of the others. Mr. Well, we got their leader anyhow, Danny. Yes, I've got him handcuffed. Yeah, you think you're smart, you coppers. Well, take me in and see how quick I can get out. Take him in, Manigan. I'm going to talk to Stacy. Okay, Danny. I'll see you at headquarters. Come on, Mug, or I'll fingerprint you with me four knuckles. Officer, you arrived rather late. The damage has been done. Yes, Mr. Stacy, the damage has been done. It was done when the first restaurant owner signed up as a member of the CROA. I don't know what you mean. You're not a member of the Cosmopolitan Restaurant Owners Association, are you? No, and I won't join. He can't make me. Who's he? Who what? Oh, never mind. I'm not talking. Well, I admire your courage in refusing to join that crooked association. But you should carry your courage further and tell the DA what you know. Yes, and have my home bombed. Maybe my wife and children killed. But the law will protect you. Yeah. 
It protected me today, didn't it? Look there, look. Look at my restaurant. A few windows broken, some customers upset, yes. But we captured the leader of the thugs. He's on his way down to headquarters now. And he'll be out on bail as quick as he gets there. You mark my words. That may be true. But we're going to smash this racket eventually. So why don't you and some of the other restaurant owners tell who's behind this racket? Not me, brother. Why don't you try to get into one of the workers' union meetings? Not all of the rank and file are loyal to their crooked leaders. You might learn a lot about how the racket works. Say, that's a great idea. I'll do it. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, Don't thank me. You get some of the higher-ups, the politicians on the run. Then we'll talk, but not before. This may be a free country, but too many of the wrong kind of people are free. taking a big chance letting you use my brother's union card to get in here tonight. It's lucky he just joined. Nobody knows him. I understand. Now, don't say nothing. Just sit still and listen or you'll get in Dutch. All right. All right, all right. The meeting will come to order. The treasurer will read his report. Hey, hey, there's a spy down here. He's a copper. Hey. He pinched me today. Hey, hey. Copper white, get him out. 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 Better beat it quick. Not me, Come on, I'll... hey, you'll get me in trouble. Come on, this way. Make a snap before it's too late. Oh, there he goes. Come on, let's clean up the crooks in this union. You had a narrow escape from personal injury this evening. Yes, I couldn't very well have fought that whole hall full of men, although some of them might have helped me. Yes, but if they'd found a false union card on you, it would have gone hard with the brother of that ticket whose card you used. Yes, it would. Uh, Where are you off to now in your Blue Beetle armor and mask? I'm paying a midnight visit to the headquarters of the Cosmopolitan Restaurant Owners Association. What do you expect to find? The Blue Beetle may be able to do what the DA can't do. Pick up enough evidence to smash the restaurant racket. Now look, Stacy. Why don't you get wise and join our association? It'll only cost you a grand every six months and all your troubles will be over. No more strikes, no more picketing, no wrecking crews calling on you. You'll get protection. We'll see to it. Am I right, boys? Yeah, sure, that's sure, that's right, right. right, that's right. Well, what do you say, Stacy? I say no. Both locals 56 and 65 are supposed to be fighting for jurisdiction in the restaurant business. Yet you're united in running the Cosmopolitan Protective Association. It's a racket. A racket pure and simple. All right, Stacy, if that's your answer. But your family's going to be awful sorry you refuse to safeguard their welfare. Okay, Lasker, open the door and let Mr. Stacy walk out into a lot of trouble. That's right, the Blue Beetle. Hey, what brings you here, Blue Beetle? I thought you only chased crooks and criminals. This is a meeting of respectable businessmen. I see one respectable businessman who can't be bluffed or frightened, but the rest of you are crooks. Oh, yeah? Well, Mr. Blue Beetle, you or the DA can't prove that, so you'd better bow out. Yes? Yes, Chief. Okay, right away, Chief. Okay. That's a big boss, Spike. Yeah? He wants to see in his private office right away. Okay, Lasker. Sorry, Mr. Blue Beetle, but you'll have to excuse me. Private business. Stay where you are, all of you, or I'll blast you with my magic ray. All right, Blue Beetle. Now what? I've always wanted to meet the big boss, as you call him, and now's my chance. Okay, Mr. Wise Guy. Right in that room there. But watch your step. The big boss don't see people except by appointment. He'll be awful sore. The Blue Beetle never makes appointments in advance. Look out, Blue Beetle. It's a trap. (laughs) Yeah, good work, Lasker. Now bowl it and move this desk over in front of the door. Sure. Hey, some of you others there. Help Lasker move the desk. Put some chairs on top of it. Uh, uh, You'd better beat it, Stacy. You better not be a witness to what's going to happen. Yeah, we're out this way, Stacy. And keep your mouth shut or you'll get some of the same. Uh, okay, Spike, he's gone. What's next? Bring some of those newspapers and pile them under the desk here and set fire to them. Hey, but this whole building will burn. It'll go up in flames like a haystack. Sure, and the blue beetle with it. Okay. There you are, Spike. And here she goes. 
Yeah, that's got it. Now, Mr. Blue Beetle, slide out of that one. You'll find the weather rather warm for July in that cloakroom. Come on, boys. Let's get going. We'll have to go out through the secret passage. The cops might blame us for this fire. What will happen to the Blue Beetle? Will he be able to force his way out of his fiery prison before it is too late? Or will he perish in the flames before he can smash the restaurant racket? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.